I started as a completely clueless young reporter on the Glasgow Herald in Glasgow when another reporter resigned and the news editor offered me a job before I even got a chance to ask and it was the best thing that ever happened. I bit his arm off and I learnt from an amazing newspaper um, how to talk to people, how to get stories, how to write, everything. If you think of the hundreds of thousands of people who every day commit this amazing act of faith of giving us their money in exchange for this wonderful thing we produce every day, it's quite a miracle really. Every morning when we wake up our first thought is what is going to make our readers repeat that act of faith tomorrow and buy us again? Every morning when I get up I start with a blank canvas with my colleagues. We've got 30 or 40 pages if we're lucky to fill with ideas and that's quite a delight really. It's the best job there is, I think, anywhere. Um, the trick is, of course, coming up with the right mix of things that are serious, things that are funny, things that are informative, things that make people drop their toast into their laps. And if we're lucky, by the end of a very long day, we've produced a compelling mix of those things which will make people the next day go out and pay for us or buy us online, download us from the internet onto their iPads or read us on the website. It's huge, and the thing is, it gets bigger all the time. Last month, we posted our record month for online readers. We had 60 million unique viewers came and looked at the Telegraph website from around the world and all over Britain. That's a lot of people, on top of already the rather vast numbers who still buy the paper. The fact is that the Telegraph and the challenge for us as journalists is to stop thinking purely in terms of how many people read the paper and start thinking about that far larger global figure of millions of people who every day, 24 hours a day, engage with us. We've said, along with other papers, that we are constantly studying how to bring us our content to people out there. We've said we've looked at some of these interesting models that the New York Times, for example, has developed of metering, of charging people after they've started using you a few times. Um, because, frankly, the thing about journalism in the 21st century is that every day is different. The world you're operating in changes all the time, minute by minute. And a dead journalist is a journalist who stops thinking about how he might change. Everything about journalism is changing, but one of the things that has changed dramatically in my time is the level of interaction between editorial, between the journalists, and the commercial end of the business. When I first started, we never really interacted at all. But the thing that's striking now is that we now talk to each other all the time because we realize that we are both in the same business, which is finding interesting and compelling ways to bring the Telegraph as a whole to people, to find ways of making money from putting together interesting propositions to our advertisers, and putting together propositions which our advertisers find useful and which our readers find useful. Uh, the key thing, of course, is to always maintain that very clear distinction between editorial and advertising, but the fact is that that doesn't prevent you finding ways of working creatively together. Supplements work very well for us because they make money for us. Supplements are also useful to the advertisers who buy them from us because they bring their message to a wider audience, often in creative and editorially interesting ways. And certainly our research suggests that supplements are appreciated by many of our readers uh, who find out things that they didn't know and get access to products, services and information that they wouldn't necessarily find in the newspaper itself. As far as we can work out, it's a winner for everybody. We're profitable again this year, we were profitable last year. One of the interesting things about the Telegraph is that we have found ways of making money, but it's not easy. And the fact is that every day you have to ask yourself, how do you make money? What kind of interesting business propositions? What kind of propositions for the readers? What kind of good journalism are you putting forward to allow you to keep selling the paper and selling your advertising? And that requires you to be nimble, it requires you to be creative, uh, it requires you to be lean and mean. Uh, and you know, for us it is a, it's a badge of honor that in a very difficult market, we're one of the few newspapers that both produces compelling, excellent journalism and still manages to return a profit. 
there's a lot of talk about the death of newspapers, but in fact, newspapers are merely evolving. The fact is that news brands like The Telegraph uh, remain strong, if anything, are stronger now than they were 50 years ago because they reach a far wider audience. And the fact is that that is what makes us strong. It's also because we are constantly innovating our journalism and producing excellent journalism. The platform through which, the, the product through which your journalism is brought to your readers may constantly evolve but it's wrong to obsess about the platform. Newspapers may be changing, but the fact is that good journalism is always going to be a powerful product to bring to people. We're very lucky to have a, a, a big and fully committed staff, and the thing that I find constantly striking is I look out there and it's very young. The age profile has changed dramatically. Uh, the fact is I'm one of the granddads of the operation, uh, and I think the thing that makes us a success is that we are driven by a whole generation of young, committed journalists who work across all platforms, who are far smarter and far more talented than I was when I was 25. One of the things uh, the editor and I are constantly joking about is that we would never have got through the door against these people because they are just so superlative and so multi-talented. Uh, but the fact is that is what is securing our future, that we are constantly renewing our staff with new, talented, incredibly invigorated people. I'm proud of our daily journalism to start with. I'm just proud of what we do, the fact that we manage to bring out a newspaper and keep a website going and are constantly dominating the news. You know, the Telegraph seems to be referred on the Today program and elsewhere more than any other outlet. So we are constantly breaking stories and bringing new stories to people. I'm obviously proud of the things we did on MPs' expenses, but I'm also proud of some of the more recent investigations we've done. We've done all kinds of investigations on university admissions. I'm incredibly proud of the work we did on MPs' expenses. I'm incredibly proud of the investigations work we have done. We've done things on university admissions. We've done things on clinics that choose the sex of babies for abortion, which was very controversial and very difficult, but actually led to a whole change in the law. The fact is that The Telegraph is constantly doing innovative journalism. And the fact that it's talked about tells me that we're being successful. The problem with being a journalist is you read all the papers all the time and you find things to like in all of them. I'm constantly impressed by the Daily Mail just for its sheer professionalism. I like a lot of the digital innovation that you see at The Guardian. And I'm very keen on a lot of the serious analysis you get out of the FT. But the fact is there's always something to read in newspapers. And I think one of the things that is encouraging for us is that we have strong competition from across the newspaper spectrum. And in a funny way, the fact that there are so many voices in newspapers is what tells us that it is a thriving and dynamic industry, is that we are all fighting with each other, and through that struggle against each other, it challenges us all to innovate all the time, and that can be only to the benefit of our readers. We got ourselves so excited about the innovations in the digital sphere that we can easily lose sight of the fact that it is still newspapers that drive the daily conversation. The fact is that the morning bulletins, whether it's the Today program or television, if you study their content, most of it they're taking inspiration from what's in that morning's newspapers. Throughout the day now, with newspapers like The Telegraph using live blogs to cover breaking events and driving the pace of events through their websites, again it is newspapers which are deciding the pace of a conversation about a story which break new lines through the day. And then it's certainly true that at night, what is interesting is how on Twitter and on the internet, the big expectation moment is what are the splashes, what are the headlines in the next day's newspapers. And what's interesting is that the Telegraph splash is already being discussed around 9, 10 o'clock at night because it's already circulating like mad on Twitter as people respond to what it is we are planning to say tomorrow in the newspaper. I think the central place of newspapers at driving the national conversation is something which is difficult to avoid and really uh, should remind us that newspapers remain really central to national life. There are all kinds of reasons why people should advertise with the Daily Telegraph, not least because we charge competitive rates. But the real reason that people should be advertising with the Telegraph is you just have to look at the readership. The readership, it's varied, it's vast, it's intelligent, it's engaged, it has disposable income. And the fact is that this is the intelligent readers which are the key customers for any product that advertisers want to sell. The fact is that increasingly, Brands are looking for interested, engaged consumers.
who can pick up on what they have to sell and spread the word. The fact is that those kind of engaged audiences that advertisers are looking for can be found most clearly among newspaper readers.